Greetings. Welcome to the Kingdom Cultural Center. Man, I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be back to communicate with you. The Kingdom Culture. All you brothers and sisters, those in Fiji, Germany, Ghana, South Africa, uh, South America, um, I'm glad to be with you once again. I had to um, take a leave of absence from uh, the videos uh, due to the fact that I had to get some work done on my physical body here. But I'm doing good now, doing great. Um, so I'm glad to have you here. And I've been writing for those of you who received the emails. Um, from the website, I, I write and um, every other day, and my wife posts them. So um, I'm basically uh, totally kingdom-minded. I don't render my uh, opinions. In the kingdom, you don't run your opinions. When you're an ambassador, um, you just keep with the government, uh, the rules and laws of your government. So having said that, we have dual citizenship. Those who are in the kingdom, I want you to know that we have dual citizenship. Keep that in mind. Um, due to the fact that um, we live in one country, one government, and that's regardless of wherever government you're in. You can be in Germany, you can be um, anywhere in Africa, South Africa, China, Germany, um, wherever. But when you're in the kingdom government, you have no fear. You, don't, you do not have uh, the sting of death. And what is the sting of death? That is fear. <laughs> I say fear. Um. Once you embrace the kingdom, excuse me, once you embrace the kingdom and it penetrates your mind, your, 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 your intellect, you realize that you're in your purpose, whatever that may be. Right now, I could say that I'm in my purpose, and that's a fact. Writing, expounding the kingdom so you can embrace it. And all those pastors and teachers out there in various countries, Nigeria, uh, Libya, um, uh, Zimbabwe, um, parts of uh, uh, South America, which I can't uh, uh, pronounce or remember right now, but I want you to know that once you embrace the kingdom, you become bold. It doesn't bother you. People can threaten you. And you don't sweat the small stuff due to the fact that you know the king will protect you. You don't fear it, whatever it is. I'll give you an example. I've been, go I, I've been going through things and tests. But whatever it is, I persevere. Uh, and don't fall in the line of where... You hear a lot of these preachers saying you got to be healed and you got to be financially blessed and you got to be, uh, your body should always be healed. That's a bunch of garbage. The ambassador Paul suffered that a lot. He went through. And here's one of the things he said. He pleaded with the Lord on several occasions to alleviate him and heal him of whatever the, the problem he had. But the Lord spoke to him and said this, my grace is sufficient for you. So having said that to Paul, Paul said, well, hey, let me keep doing what I'm doing. He'll take care of me. That's the attitude. Regardless of what's going on, you stay in God's word. You stay in your purpose. Paul was in prison. He was whipped. 
but you stay in God's Word. And I want you to understand that this was in the beginning of spreading the kingdom. And I'm going to tell you something else now. The kingdom government is exactly what it is. It's a government. So all you individuals, excuse me, who tells me Happy Easter and all that, first of all, I want to say something to you. If you want me to write and tell you things about Easter, I'll post it on our website. But I'm going to tell you right now, Easter is a pagan holiday. It has nothing to do with Jesus. Number one. Number two, we shouldn't be doing it anyway. Now, you should study the word to know these things. Many of you say, you know, I'm just going to appeal to your sense of mathematics. Are you ready for this? Jesus said, as Jonah was in the belly of the large fish, so will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. Now, unless they have changed what a day, an hour, how many hours consist in one day, there's no way in the world you can get three days and three nights from Friday to Sunday. From Friday evening, 6 to Sunday. No way. So what I'm telling you to do, I'm challenging you. Study God's Word. It's important that you study it. Because many of you worship, you don't even know what you worship. Know who you are. I've said this once again, I've said it on several occasions, that your greatest asset is not your faith. It's your faith in God's Word. Not your faith in your quote-unquote religious beliefs. Forget that. Religion is exactly what it is. It's a membership, but the kingdom of God that's what Jesus, let me, let me, let me go to you. I want you to realize something. I'm, and I'm going to stick on this for a little while because the Holy Spirit is having me to really stay on this. Um, when Jesus was speaking, when he came out of the wilderness, when he first came out of the wilderness, he only had one message. And from that point, that message was turn around. What you would say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What was he saying? You're going the wrong way. We can say that to this day, and I've said it so many times. You have leaders, religious leaders, that are preaching on prosperity, preaching on purpose, preaching on financial independence, preaching on healing. And all of these are good, but in the kingdom, these things exist. Do you know, when Jesus told his disciples, Let's go on. Uh, turn to uh, Matthew. I want you to um, the 10th chapter. Matthew's 10. Get you to see what he did in terms of his disciples and what he told them. Listen. 10th chapter of Matthew's. Starting with the first verse. And he called, and when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out. He gave them power over unclean spirits. Remember that. To cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. First Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, and James, the son of Zebedee, 
and John, his brother, Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Libius, whose surf name was Theophilus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Now, let's go on. These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles. Why was that? Because God in the future had already lined up Paul, the apostle, the ambassador, Paul, to go to be the apostles to the Gentiles. He was an ambassador. Now, what quarantine, what causes, what constitute you to be an ambassador? A an ambassador doesn't surrender his own opinion. What he does, he expounds the government, his kingdom government, and how it works, and who he is. And Paul did this in the light of his behavior and in word. Now, I want you to understand this. I might have to leave here for after this session. But I want you to understand this one thing. When Jesus told his disciples to go, he told them what to say, how to say, where to go, and, where, and who to say it to. But he stuck with his primary message. That was the kingdom of heaven. Now next time, we're going to read we're going to go a little further down. I want you to understand the importance of the kingdom being preached. These are the last days. And you see, when I say this, before I go, remember this one thing is very important. We live in time. There's borders. But God, the Lord God, lives in eternity. There's no time. There's no borders. Until next time. Thank you.